but I'm one of the And uh, the slogan, one of the day, was very positive message of our brief. Coming in with uh, an absolutely top level super dinner, uh, honoring John Paulson and with uh, Will Wall Rose, the Secretary of Commerce of the Senior Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, I will not say a lot. I will only repeat what I said at lunch, that I'm absolutely gratified to have the opportunity to do this event year after year. This is year number 21. And uh, thank you. And without the fact that we're astounding, self-serving, I don't really think that anybody else can claim for having done an event about Greece outside of Greece for so long and with such success. And the, the difficulty it was especially when Greece was going through a tough time. Fortunately, as we all saw today, we're in a new stage, a new area, uh, a new future. So I'm not going to say a lot. Uh, I would like before asking uh, Mr. Papatovic to come and uh, take over. I would like to thank my sister Olga. I love you know uh, But also I would like to thank my staff because Without our clients and friends, we would not be in business, but also without the right staff and the right team dedicated, we would not continue long to be in business. I would like my staff to please stand up and be acknowledged. And uh, I would like to thank our particularly Eleni Day. Eleni, she has been with me for 20 years, and uh, as you know, I would like to thank you.
and the strong political willingness to address what is needed for Greece to become an attractive investment destination. This includes rational rationalizing the tax environment, digitalizing public services, and cutting red tape, particularly in what concerns setting up, setting up a business and pursuing major investment projects. As you mentioned earlier today, a new wise study suggests that Greece is back on the investment map and confirms that these are exactly the reforms that the international investment community would like to see. Indeed, Greece offers today significant opportunities for foreign investors in a variety of sectors, such as logistics, infrastructure and ports, energy through renewable energy sources, the financial sector, this includes opportunities related to the securitization of any bills, but also the insurance sector, life sciences and the pharmaceutical industry, real estate, as well said today in a number of panels, and last but not least, tourism. I could go on mentioning agri-food, health service centers, and last but not least, the technology sector. Before thanking you for your attention, I would like to take two minutes to introduce our next speaker. It has been my privilege to welcome Will Burroughs to the Capital Link Forum once again, three years ago. That was in 2016. It was just a few days after President Trump had nominated him for the post of Secretary of Commerce. I was at the time, and still remain, impressed by his remarkable career and achievements. Above all, I have the utmost respect for his attitude to risk and his role in transforming a number of industries in the United States as diverse as steel, coal, telecommunications, and textiles. During his tenure at the Department of Commerce, he has shown the same determination, vigor, and result-oriented approach that characterized him throughout his career. Will Burroughs has been, and he's still, a very good friend of Greece. He invested in the Greek banking sector at a time when most people would have warned him not to do so. But then again, if I may use his own words on a different occasion, we are being paid to take perceived risk rather than actual risks. <coughs> Mr. Ross was back again in Athens in September praising the government not only for implementing the right policies, but doing so with a sense of urgency. Indeed, we all share the sense of urgency. Greece has wasted a lot of precious time, and the current opportunity must not be missed. Mr. Ross, the floor is yours. Well, thank you, panels, for that wonderful introduction. I'm glad my wife was here to hear it, because you can never get enough credit at home. <laughs> so thank you. I'm also very impressed with the representation of the Greek government that's here tonight. Four ministers, three deputy ministers, and the ambassador. I hope you all bought trip insurance because the government can't afford to lose you if there's any kind of a mishap. But seriously, Nicholas and Ogle, I thank you for inviting me to speak tonight in honor of John Paulson, my friend, my good friend, and a very, very good friend of Greece. As you know, John is this year's well-deserved recipient of the Capital Link his Hellenic Leadership Award for his ardent and tenacious support of Greece throughout a long decade in which many investors abandoned the country. John invested because of his faith in the country's potential to, as Winston Churchill said, move forward into bright, sunlit uplands. 
He has helped Greece from its darkest hour. My task after dinner is to introduce him, but I'll begin now with a little discussion of the great success of the Mitsotakis government. The new government has helped transform Greece from being Europe's ugly duckling into potentially a beautiful white swan. It's only in this group I could say a white swan. It's gratifying tonight. It's gratifying tonight to see so many ministers of the government who have made this possible. And we look forward to hosting Prime Minister Mitsotakis and his government. They'll be visiting with President Trump in Washington on January 7th. Be probably the first official visit that he takes after he returns from the Christmas holiday. The Greek Minister for Development and I have met quite a few times and had some very, very good dinners together. And I hope that's just a precursor of what will come in the future. I thank also the New York Stock Exchange and to all of you in the room from the financial and business communities for your devotion to Greece. Who would have imagined that Greek sovereign debt would trade at a lower yield than Italy's? Even more stunning is that Greece now borrows at a cheaper rate than the United States. My boss is very unhappy. <laughs> Only a few years ago, there were perhaps a handful of people who would have predicted Greece's turnaround. The country was, um, you know, as the brink of abyss. Some observers even worried that if Greece were not bailed out, the EU and maybe even the global economy would go down with it. The Percy Shelley quote, of 1821, we are all Greeks, was not used in the way that Shelley had intended. He meant it to be glorifying the lasting impact of Greek law, Greek literature, Greek religion, and the arts. But instead it was used as a euphemism of impending doom. Today, Percy Shelley would be proud. He'd also be thrilled to be back from his grave. <laughs> Greece's GDP growth of 1.8% is among the best in Europe. And I think we should give that a special round of applause. <laughs> and next year, the IMF even though they don't quite agree with the Greek government forecast, even they forecast a higher growth of 2.3%. Again, really good by European standards. To me, most impressively, this is being achieved even with a primary government budget surplus of 3.5% of GDP. Very few countries have ever experienced meaningful GDP growth with the negative economic impact of such large government surpluses. In fact, your fellow EU members are struggling to grow even with the stimulative effect of large primary budget deficits. So it seems a little strange they're pushing Greece for a surplus, they're operating at a deficit. Where is the disconnect in this whole equation? <laughs> Meanwhile, unemployment in Greece has dropped from its crisis peak level of 28% to 16.7% forecast this year, the lowest rate in almost nine years. And I think that, too, we should give a round of applause to. <laughs> Though it is higher than it was 
prior to the financial crisis of 2008, the unemployment rate is consistently decreasing month by month and is forecast to drop to 15.4% in 2020. Housing prices have risen for five consecutive quarters and are up by 3.8% in the second quarter of this year. Consumer confidence has surged from May through November. And over the past 12 months, exports were up by 6.1% and retail trade has increased 5.1%. U.S. imports of goods from Greece, I'm happy to report, increased by 27% last year to 1.7 billion. That's still a small number, so I think there's lots of room for them to grow. Early in October, Standard & Poor's upgraded Greek sovereign debt by one notch, from B plus to double B minus, with a positive outlook. I believe that if the government continues its policies of deregulation, privatization, reducing licensing requirements, lowering taxes, and implementing pension reforms, that rating could become investment grade within 24 months. And I'm not saying that just because your finance minister is my seatmate. <laughs> uh, moreover, who would have thought that the Greek stock market would be up more than 40% in 2019, the best stock market in Europe, and one of the best in the world? It makes me a little angry that I'm not still in the private sector, because I've been foreclosed from participating in it. Especially heartening is the doubling of Greek banks' market value. My firm, like John's, has been a long-term investor in Greek banking, so I know what the struggle has been. And I gather tomorrow will be a big day for banks and for the economy as some NPL legislation goes forward and there's the 40% guarantee coming in. That's a really important step because bank liquidity and bank extension of credit is absolutely essential to go the next step in Greece's recovery. None of these positive results is an accident. They all reflect the pro-business policies of the Mitsotakis administration. If I may, I would say he has adopted Trump-style tax reduction and deregulation. And Greece is finally implementing the private development of the old Athens airport, a project delayed so many times by the Cyprus government. I understand that next comes gas distribution, and that's a hugely important event to change the country's hydrocarbon economy. During its financial crisis, Greece did divest a majority stake in the port of Piraeus to China's state-controlled Costco shipping company. This deal has been a great success, with container shipments rising geometrically, and the Greek government even received a small dividend on its minority stake. Mitsotakis government recently approved another 600 million investment from Costco, bringing the total close to 2 billion. That fort seems to be en route to becoming the largest in Europe, as Costco saves several days transit time and cost on European-bound containers, thereby making China's goods and others even cheaper in Europe. More recently, Prime Minister Mitsotakis and China's President Xi 
exchanged elaborate state visits during which they signed 16 memoranda of cooperation. President Xi said the China Belt and Road Initiative would invest far more in Greece. And while I can see some immediate benefit to Greece from that, I must offer a word of caution. Geopolitically motivated cash can be just as dangerous as a Trojan horse. <clears throat> and there can be a tendency for ports to become the equivalent of naval bases. But I don't believe that the Greek government will suddenly shift its alliance from the US because our relationship is so deep and so strong. The history of Greek migration to the US, Greece's popularity with American tourists and businesses, and our common heritage, Western heritage, are powerful bonds. In fact, Greek is so embedded in the U.S. that our college fraternities still are identified with Greek letters. Greece is also among the full few full-paying members of NATO. This is an example that other more prosperous member states in Europe should emulate. I think we should applaud Greece for stepping up <laughs> U.S. participation in the coming tens of billions of dollars of privatization will be really important. Our funds, as you know, have already been invested in the rehabilitation of Greek banks and other businesses. Having traveled repeatedly to Greece when I was in the private sector, and now a couple of times as Commerce Secretary, and meeting in Athens this past September with Prime Minister Mitsotakis, I am really optimistic that progress is being made, not only in our relations, but hopefully in relations between Greece and its region as a whole. You fellows do live in a bit of a dangerous territory, and I think you know that. But a big possible crowd, one big possible crowd, as I mentioned, is Europe's dismal outlook. Europe is the most important source of exports and tourists. I believe, though, that as Greece deregulates, privatizes, and raises the intellectual value-added of its output, and as it exports more natural gas, its trade deficit will come down and reduce that drain on the economy. And hopefully, Turkey and Libya will deal with their claims on Greece and Cyprus for their offshore natural gas and let that proceed in a proper fashion. And the Greek government's recent initiative to make Thessaloniki an innovation hub, the Thess Intec concept, has attracted much attention in the U.S. and elsewhere. And that's been evidenced by Pfizer's decision to make its regional headquarters and manufacturing hub there. Cisco also announced that it will open an innovation center in Thessaloniki to develop technologies for smart cities, AI, the Internet of Things, and new technology applications for agriculture. My compliments also to the current non-DOM tax initiative to attract retirees, ship owners, and successful international entrepreneurs. I think it will be very well received. Why would anyone not spend as much time as possible in Greece? The US government has pledged 
to help keep Greece's economic momentum going. <clears throat> Our governments agreed to work closely on a host of issues, including energy, including intellectual property, including infrastructure, especially including 5G and foreign direct investment. And in fact, I had a team in Athens just last week to make progress on these issues and to participate in the AmCham's 30th Annual Greek Economic Summit. They followed up on key aspects of the U.S.-Greece strategic dialogue that Secretary of State Mike Pompeo pled there in October. And we welcome input from all of you. As we gather here tonight, we are, as Percy Sally said 198 years ago, all Greeks. Thank you, and I'll be back after dinner to give you some startling facts about our Hellenic Award winner, John Paulson. Thank you very much, uh, Secretary Ross. That was an absolutely uh, amazing and inspiring speech. By the way, dear friends, before we go to dinner, please allow me to mention that tonight's dinner is sponsored by EY and Axia. So I would be grateful if you can give them a round of applause. Thank you, EY, and thank you, Axia. We're delighted to have you back. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, dignitaries, Honorable State Secretary Nico Noga, thank you for providing the ability to say a few words for a great friend, a mentor, and one of the greatest investors of our generation, John Paulson. I will not uh, take time to speak about the Greek statistics. I think we've heard a lot. I think you've all done an amazing job throughout the day, uh, expanding and extending, and obviously, you know, after we were, it's hard to, to pick that. So, I'll share some much more personal things about John. I had the pleasure and the luck to meet John almost 20 years ago, during my early step from this industry. This was a casual dinner in Midtown Manhattan, back in 1999. At the time, I had just secured my first job, out of college with Salmon Street Barney, and John was managing a very focused merger arbitrage fund of 250 million in assets under management. John was very generous, and he offered me his time and contact details in case I wanted to reach out for advice. A few years later, in 2001, and as I was looking for my next steps over the hedge fund industry, he gave me his time. I visited him in early stages when he was based on 52nd and 5th, if I'm not mistaken, on his first, on his first office, uh, I guess. And he actually helped me to see things clear and take the next step, working for a family office investing exclusively in hedge funds. From that point on, I had the pleasure to attend annual investor meetings and see John building an amazing legacy. to a global powerhouse with firm assets in 36 billion under management. In another turn of this historical ride, it happened that my partner Antonius and I had a meeting with JP and a Japanese institution at his office in 2006. At the end of the meeting, John asked us to stay back and he shared with us what would end up being one of the most successful trades in the history of financial markets. At the time, he asked us if it would be a good idea to raise 150 million for the short subprime trade, since with his ability to dissect the most complicated concepts in a single graph, and with its effortless style and brilliance to communicate a complicated trade with a few words. As you can imagine, the rest is history. John, as a Greek and as a professional, want to extend a big thank you 
for your attention and investment commitment in Greece. Your presence and diligence have served as a catalyst to bring institutional investors to Greece, but also to improve transparency and governance in public companies. With your endless effort to transform Piraeus Bank and also keep the government honest with actions in the EDA. In addition, your patience and commitment, irrespective of the twists and turns, to support your investment and help Greece become a more known destination have a huge impact. And I hope the best year will be ahead of us. In addition, as an American and as a New Yorker, I want to thank you for your philanthropy work and commitment to Central Park Conservation, <coughs> as well as many other work because Your help and support through Thick and Thin means a lot to all Greeks in this entire audience of finance professionals. Thank you. Thank you, Dimitri. And now, uh, Christos uh, Megali is coming to the podium. And uh, I would like to second that to what Dimitri said about Central Park, because I live close to Central Park, and I have a reason to thank you every day. So, thank you. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor and privilege for me to join you all here tonight to pay tribute to our honorees and our key shareholder at Pareus Bank, John Paulson. John's contribution to Greece's recovery has been a remarkable act of leadership that we have come together to acknowledge this evening with much gratitude and appreciation. It's all that had to do with John's perseverance. In those difficult times during the crisis, John stood firm and had the courage of his convictions filled with optimism about uh, Greece's future. He invested significant capital in the banks when it was needed it most, and other investors followed his lead. The strong participation and leadership of Paulson and Co. was crucial, and without it, the recapitalization of the Greek banking system likely would not have succeeded. But what followed was an equally, if not <coughs> more important. John set out promoting new standards of corporate governance in Greece. In the case of Pareus Bank, he was instrumental in helping to assemble a board of directors of international caliber. <coughs> he was demanding of a new management team. And this was the reason why I joined Pareus Bank from London two and a half years ago. He insisted that we upgrade our business practices in every way. In so doing, he established new benchmarks that are now permitting the economy. The impact will be far-reaching and long-lasting in our country. John, we salute you for your tenacity, far-sightedness, your perseverance. We thank you for your principled leadership. And from our side at Pireus Bank, specifically, we look forward to continuing to build a dynamic institution that contributes strongly to Greece's prosperity. John, congratulations.
Well, you have heard a lot this evening. And, and now it's my privilege, actually, to present the award to John, the 2019 Capital Link Hellenic Leadership Award to a good friend who's helped make Greece's turnaround possible. In fact, he really made it probable, not just possible. John, or JP, as some of his friends call him, is one of the world's leading financiers and philanthropists. As founder, president, and portfolio manager of Paulson and Company, John has invested in hundreds and hundreds of companies and has helped many of them survive difficult times. In others, he's helped manage themselves better. He serves on the board of trustees of NYU, the Council on Foreign Relations, <coughs> the Economic Club of New York, the Partnership for New York City, and the Dean's Advisory Board at the Harvard Business School. There are also many more things, but I don't want to keep you up too late tonight. He especially has donated generously to the Central Park Conservancy and serves on its board. That conservancy is a major reason why all of us are able to stroll through Central Park at night without getting mugged and where you will see fountains and gardens instead of piles of litter. He's committed also to training the next generation of scientists and engineers, having made the largest donation ever to Harvard University to endow its engineering school, which is now known as the John A. Paulson School of Engineering and Applied Sciences. I really think we should give them a hand specifically. <laughs> What's less well known is John also has been very generous to the hospital in Southampton which as I get older, I'm very appreciative because we have a house out there. And uh, he has a home there as well. But what we really don't know is he also made a good donation to a hospital in Ecuador. His father and grandmother were both Ecuadorans. This has been a long journey from that Ecuadorian background to New York City, to Greece, and now to getting this award this evening. And like Nicholas and myself, he's a graduate of Harvard Business School. Although, two things. He was in a graduating class more recently than my own. I'm sort of a late bloomer. And he also was a Baker Scholar, which was a notch above where I was when I was graduated from the school. His training in business at Harvard has served our country very well, not just Greece, and particularly during the period when he became an early supporter of Donald Trump's economic policies in 2016. And his <coughs> opinion has been vindicated by 30 new highs for the stock market and spectacular jobs reports, <coughs> including an amazing 266,000 new jobs just created in the month of November. John is a native of this city. He's a product of the streets of Queens and spent his undergraduate years about 60 blocks south of us at NYU, where he was the class valedictorian. Um, he's even had a book written about him by Wall Street Journal reporter Greg Zuckerman. It's 
called The Greatest Train Ever, the behind the scenes story of how John Paulson defied Wall Street and made financial history. The book was published in 2010. I recommend it. You can order a hardcover copy on Amazon if you haven't already read it. Read it. It gives the word contrarian a new meaning, new volume, and new validity. In the world of global commerce, John has consistently demonstrated his commitment to Greece, where he was an early and consistent investor, as everybody in this room knows. He was one of the few who had the faith and commitment to the country as it cascaded through its grave economic and social crises. He's made a significantly positive impact on how business is done in Greece, not just in his investments, but in the Greek business community overall. He's also altered the views of other investors, giving <coughs> them the faith they need to engage with Greek companies and with Greek markets. He's a very strong supporter of Greek-American relations. In fact, he's the only person I know who has hosted in New York business community luncheons, both for Prime Minister Mitsotakis and his predecessor, Cyprus. That's a really generous set of things for John to do. He and his wife, Jenny, are raising two brilliant and musically gifted girls here in Manhattan. And if all these other accomplishments weren't enough, he's a very avid tennis player. As he follows me by three years in winning this award, I'm especially honored to give it to him. So JP, please join me on the stage so that I can present you with this well-deserved and befitting Hellenic Leadership Award. Mitsutakis's remarks today in a speech saying that this is the time to invest. With the change in government economic policy, with a focus on growth, job creation, lower taxes, foreign direct investment, and a more efficient government, we are at the beginning of what will be a multi-year and perhaps if these policies are maintained, a multi-decade multi period of prosperity for Greece. With the new economic policies and the extremely capable leadership of Prime Minister Mitsutakis, Greece will become a shining light of growth in Europe. And as Wilbur so appropriately analyzed, we have already received the results. 
Demetrius didn't want to repeat them, but they're really worth repeating. The stock market up over 40% is the highest in Europe. The Greek government 10-year bonds, is this even possible? Are not only lower than Italy, but lower than the US at only 1.34%. Housing prices overall were up close to 8% in the second quarter, and that's after a 10-year decline. But in the more prosperous areas, are up as much as 20, 30, and even 50% from the lows. As you all know, commercial real estate prices have risen even more sharply. But I believe we are just at the beginning of a recovery with the pro-growth economic policies of the Greek government. These include, as you know, lower corporate taxes, lower individual taxes, the non-dom tax incentives to attract wealthy residents who, through my personal relations, I'm already aware of people that are considering locating to Greece, accelerated privatization and many others. Growth will not only continue, but will accelerate. And so will the growth in the value of investments. For example, while house prices are up for the year, they would still need to rise 55% just to reach the level they were at in 2008. And while the stock market is up sharply this year, it would still have to rise another 600% to reach previous peaks. <coughs> Greece is now following the recovery path of other countries coming out of recessions, like the US, which points to sustained periods of growth. For Greeks, now is the time to buy a house. Now is the time to purchase Greek stocks. Now is the time to buy real estate. Now is the time to invest in Greece. And this is for all Greeks at all income levels. Whether, whether it is a house purchased for 100,000, which will grow as the, as the demand for housing increases, as the unemployment rate goes down, and mortgage financing becomes more readily available, the lower price houses will rise, or higher house prices for a million dollars or more, which will rise as more people come back to Greece and more non dom seek to locate there. For the stock market, everyone can benefit. It's a shame that people will put their money in a bank and earn almost no money when they can put it in the stock market and reap the rewards of a continuously improving economy. Whether it's 10,000 or 10 million, those benefits could be achieved by everybody. Now is the time to get involved. For those that do, five years from now, when they look back, they'll be very pleased that they did. You've, you've remarked that we are a substantial investor in the banking sector, both in Piraeus and Alpha Banks, and I believe these also are another area for good investment. While risky, the risk for the banking sector is coming down sharply. While the bank stocks have risen, they still only trade at a fraction of book value. As the collateral value of bank loans rise and NPEs are reduced, <coughs> provision expense will come down and profits and ROE will rise. Bank stocks can continue to be outperformers and are probably the highest better investments in the Greek market. And personally, I'm lucky to have the managements we have leading the banks we're involved in, both with Christos and my partner Alex Blades, who has been on the board for Perea since the time of our investment. Let me conclude by saying Greeks are lucky to have a leader like Prime Minister Mitsotakis. Greece has always had a highly skilled, highly educated, entrepreneurial workforce. Now with the right economic policies, Greece can grow at above average rates for an extended period of time, creating a beacon of success in the Eurozone. 
I'm excited about the future in Greece. I'm excited to invest in Greece. Greece is back. The time to invest is now. Thank you.